We're here in Statuary Hall in the United States Capitol in front of the statue that was placed here recently of Rosa Parks, who led the bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama in the mid-1950s. This is Black History Month, February is Black History Month. One of the most important parts of that history was the Civil Rights Movement in the early 1960s. And an instrumental figure and leader in that movement was my friend and colleague here in the House, Representative John Lewis, who at the time was a young student, part of the nonviolent, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Mr. Lewis, uh, it's been great to know you, and it's been a real privilege. Could you share some thoughts about your experience there as a, as a young person in the early 1960s in the Civil Rights Movement? Well, my friend, thank you so much, my friend and my brother, for having me here. Uh, I grew up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, outside of a little place called Troy. When I was growing up, I saw the signs that said, white waiting, colored waiting, white men, colored men, white women, colored women. But in 1955, 15 years old in the 10th grade, I heard of Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on radio. And the action of Rosa Parks and the words of Dr. King inspired me to find a way to get involved in the American Civil Rights Movement. I met Rosa Parks in 1957, and the next year, in 1958, I met Martin Luther King Jr. And I started studying the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence. I didn't like those signs. I didn't like what I saw. And I would ask my mother and my father and my grandparents. They would say, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way. Don't get in trouble. But I was inspired to get in trouble. I started sitting in. A good kind of trouble. Good kind of trouble. It was good. I was sitting in, went on the freedom ride. We were beaten. We was left bloody. But we never turned to violence. The action of Rosa Parks, the words and leadership of Dr. King, inspired me and our country today is a much better country because people stood up and spoke up and you know like history african-american history is american history right. we all should know the price that people pay to make our country a better place so you've led for many years and i was privileged to join you uh, i know senator coons has as well at the civil rights pilgrimage through Alabama. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Selma uh, March uh, for Voting Rights. And I know you were, you were beaten as part of a, a demonstration march on a Sunday that's now referred to as Bloody Sunday. Well, in Selma, Alabama, like so many other places in the Deep South, African American could not register to vote simply because of the color of their skin. People were asked to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap, count the number of jelly beans in a jar. People stood in a movable line. There were African-American lawyers and doctors and teachers, college professors. Over and over again, they were told, you didn't qualify, you didn't pass the literacy test. They got arrested, they were jailed, they were beaten. And one day, March 7, 1965, we decided to march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, 50 miles walk. We were beaten, left bloody. Some of us was left unconscious. But because of what happened on that Sunday, President Lyndon Johnson came and spoke to a joint session of Congress and introduced the Voting Rights Act. It was passed by the Congress and signed into law on August 6, 1965. And it's changed America forever. That was a big day and a happy day, I'm sure. It was a, a glorious day. It was like um, somebody has spoken from some place, change America. You've shared with, with me from time to time your experience speaking at the Marshall in Washington where Martin Luther King made his famous Sigh of the Dream speech. You were one of the speakers, the youngest speaker, I think, that day. Well, Talk on, about that. Well, on August 28, 1963, uh, we had to march on Washington. Ten people were selected to speak. I was 23 years old. 23 years 23 old? 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I spoke number six. Dr. King spoke number 10. And I tell you, it, it was very, very moving to be on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And seeing Martin Luther King and hearing him, he turned those 
marble steps of the Lincoln Memorial into a modern day pulpit. He really preached that day. And when the march was all over, when the 10 of us had finished speaking, President Kennedy invited us down to the White House and he stood in the door of the Oval Office, greeting each one of us. He was beaming like a proud father. He kept saying, you did a good job, you did a good job. And when he got to Dr. King, he said, you did a good job and you had a dream. That was my last time seeing President Kennedy. Well, I got to tell you, it's been a great privilege serving with you and serving every day in this house, uh, the People's House, with uh, somebody who's truly a historic figure in, in our country. And I just want to thank you for all the things that you've done for, for all of America. Well, thank you. I really have enjoyed serving with you. You're my friend and you're my brother. And you're going to come to Delaware next month, I understand. I'm going to be in Delaware uh, next month. I believe it's March 4th. 4th. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Well, thank you, my friend.